Oi, pessoal, eu sou a Camila Macedo e hoje eu estou aqui com meu colega da equipe de curadoria de longas metragens do Olhar de Cinema, Leonardo Bonfim, para uma conversa sobre o filme Garotas Museu com a sua diretora, Shelley Silver. O filme estreou mundialmente no Doc Leipzig no ano passado e tem sua primeira exibição brasileira nessa décima edição do Olhar de Cinema na Mostra Outros Olhares. So, welcome, Shelley. Thank you so much for being here with us today and for screening your film at our festival. It's really a pleasure and we are very excited about talking with you about Girls Museum. So, to get started, I guess we can say the film is based on interviews with this group of girls who are visiting the Museum of Fine Arts in Leipzig. And one of the things that really catches my attention is how the film combines three different discursive or narrative layers. I mean, the girls' storytelling, of course, but also the narrative presented through the museum's space, through the selected artworks and its dispositions. And finally, the one fabricated by the film itself through its editing and the way of cutting and recomposing the images, the girls' speeches, and everything else. So I'd like to start this talk by asking you about how the idea of the film first came about, and then how it took the shape of its final format with all these layers I just mentioned it. Well, first of all, thank you uh, so much for inviting my film uh, to your festival. I'm really thrilled to be here today. and. I wish I could be there in person, but maybe some other time. Um, the film had a very simple start. I was uh, going to Leipzig with another film called A Tiny Place That Is Hard to Touch. And they always uh, have the hospitality in this building. And I always wondered, what is this building? And it turned out to be the MDBK which is the Historical Art Museum, Fine Arts Museum in Leipzig. And I had a morning free, so I went upstairs and I was really impressed in every way by their collection. And the thing that struck me most of all was how many women and girls were depicted in the museum's paintings and sculptures, how they were depicted often in um, kind of precarious positions or, uh, and, and how overwhelmingly male the artists who made these artworks were. And on the one hand, it was a love and on the other hand, a hate relationship with this institution. And I realized all institutions are like this. And um, then I had this question, how would I have reacted if I, or, how did I react to these kind of institutions when I was young? Did I just accept them or did I question them? And there was no way for me to ask myself. I don't have a good memory that way. So then I was much more excited actually to invite girls now into the museum to see how they react to the collection and the institution. And hi, Shelley. Uh... Hey. I would like to know about the, the editing process because there doesn't seem to be a widget pattern. Uh, there are girls who appear more or the less, uh, some appear at the end of the film, and we don't have a precise idea about the, the next painting and also the next girl and also the next impression. Uh, uh, I believe in, in a, it's an interesting game for the spectator. Uh, what do you think about, about that? I mean, that's really great to hear that it is a kind of game like strategy that it has like this question, what will we see next? Who will we see next? I really love that about it. Um, the structure is pretty simple in that more or less I started um, historically with the older works and then moved through the museum and the curation, although sometimes the museum mixes very new work with old work to create different discussions. Um, with, I think all of my interview um, based work, I really uh, privilege the people who have the most to say and the people who are the most passionate about saying it. And so sometimes, as you say, there were um, girls who appeared throughout and then sometimes they would just come in for one artwork where you could tell that they were really excited to talk about it. So there was this uh, 
continuum of some girls and then these other girls who just made guest appearances because what they said was so amazing. And so that was the general logic. And the editing took quite a long time because I did do quite a bit of interviewing and also because German and Dari are not my mother tongues. So there was a lot of translation that had to take place. And the first edit was two and a half hours, which was way too long. <laughs> and then amazingly, when I got from beginning to end, um, it took me only a week to cut it down to more or less the length you see. Once I saw the bigger picture, then I could really go in and start weeding things out. What were repetitions? What were kind of voyages that were interesting but not essential? And there I got to really build uh, another heart of the piece, which is these um, images of the artwork that are so important to me. And about the girls, how did you meet them and select them? <laughs> like, uh, do you already knew them? <laughs> A few of them I already know, but uh, many of them, uh, it was through outreach. And I would say that it wasn't at all me selecting them. It was them selecting me. Anybody who wanted to do it was welcome. Uh, not everybody wanted to do it. And I really, some of them I found through contacts that I knew in Leipzig. I had taught a workshop uh, in Leipzig, actually in Halle. And so I had contact with uh, filmmakers there who had taken the workshop. Others of them were outreach, like I got in touch with a lot of, with a lot of youth organizations in Leipzig. And then others were word of mouth. Uh, so that I had um, friends whose daughter was in it, but they were actually helping out a Syrian family in Berlin. And they said, oh, the daughter would be fantastic, someone else recommended um, Farinos, who's the uh, girl from Afghanistan. And so then she joined. And so it was really every which way, but they picked me, I didn't pick them. And you work with interviewers, uh, all of them women too, right? Uh... All of the people who did the interviews identify as women. Um, a lot of the interviews were done with Anna Marie Riemer, who is actually in the education department of the museum, or was at the time. And she was sort of given to me by the museum to help. And we, it was a great team, but other of them came uh, from other ways. And I did some of the interviews with some of the girls because I could ask the question, in English and they knew enough English to understand it, then they answered in German. This was exhausting and I don't recommend doing that because <laughs> I was also doing camera, I was also doing sound. Oh, it's nice that you mentioned it because I know that working with other languages, but English, which is your mother tongue, is something recurrent in your films, right? So I was curious about how has it worked in practice with the girls? or doesn't speak English. I don't know if I you mean, wanna add something. I think it worked really well. Um, sometimes it would take a little bit of extra time because I would want to know what they answered so I could follow up with the next question uh, or the next, you know, the next painting. Uh, but it, on the one hand, it's alienating because of course anybody who's native German speaker in a way understands more than I do, the filmmaker. In another way, I think, you know, I've worked with Japanese, I've worked with Chinese, I've worked with German several times, and it really makes me take the language seriously in a much more concrete way than I think native speakers would because they just are in it. Whereas I have to take it on um, like bricks you know, putting bricks together to make a sentence, yeah. And you like to, to work with interviews, you know, both in fiction and documentary. Uh, it seems to be a narrative form that attracts you because uh, you can have uh, multiple voices that even contradict each other. And, and particularly uh, it's, it's 
I believe it's um, element, uh, central element uh, in, in this film, right? Completely. I, I think that one of the things that the camera and the moving image is unbelievably good at is making these kind of links, asking these questions, uh, bringing people out in their answers that otherwise would never take place. Uh, with this film, it was very important that the girls take center stage, that they were really experts, that there was uh, no one in the frame with them. And so that too, giving them this place was so important. Whereas I've done other interviews that take place in people's homes or on the street, and that's quite different. Here, it was really uh, going with the genre of the expert interview, which I personally really enjoyed. And I think, except for at the very beginning, when a few of the girls were a bit nervous, that they really enjoyed too, and stepped up to the plate in this unbelievable way, you know, that I didn't expect necessarily. Yeah, I would like to go deeper in this subject because in your career as an artist, you have been working on this theme of the watcher and the watched in multiple ways. And in Girls Museum, we were watching girls, watching artworks, mostly made by men, as you already mentioned it, and mostly representing female bodies. So how did you conceive the way you were going to look at the girls and the way the film would watch and represent them? Yeah, as I said, I wanted to film them within this particular genre. Uh, I mean, not, you know, I didn't bring in lights. It wasn't a formal, formal, uh, you know, interview with a crew, but I wanted it to be straightforward. Um, I, I didn't want to, I wanted to ask them questions that were not um, child questions. I mean, they were the same questions I would have asked to anyone. Uh, they were very open questions like, what do you see? What's happening here? What do you think of this painting or sculpture? Um, and have it be very clear that it was not a um, voyeuristic view. It was a very, they were talking to us, they were talking to me, if not directly into the camera. And then I, it was really intriguing because of course the paintings and the sculptures, it was a whole other uh, gaze, right? Because where was the woman in the painting looking? Who was she looking at? Was she looking, I, I had a lot of fun looking where in the room that people were looking at, like, was it this exchange of looks between different paintings or sculptures? And so it made me think a lot about that, the, the cur curation, my view, and also the way that they presented themselves, uh, even based on costume. There was one amazing girl, Paula, who's, you know, of course, several years older now. She's the uh, girl who has the amazing end statement. And uh, the last I heard from her mother was like, why did I wear those overalls? Why didn't you tell me to wear something different? <laughs> First, I just thought the overalls were so great. But that was like, yeah, that was one of her comments. <laughs> And as you what said, you, uh, could I just ask a follow up question to Camila? What did you think of, of your, you know, the question you ask of the way that the girls were imaged? You treat them as specialists, like the one, like, well, let me try to to structure the idea in English because it can be pretty hard. But you know, like you you give you give you hear what they want to say. And this is the, I, I am talking about the sound, but this is also in the image, I guess. Like it, the, the frontality gives them importance, I guess. Um, I don't know, I really like the I, I am and enthusiast of the film, I guess. <laughs> I am you. very excited about the Brazilian premiere because I, I guess there's a lot of discussions that really interest, that, that I am really interested on, on 
and and I know it's not a personal interest. It's something that spreads. And also the way I did the interviews, of course, what the girls are saying is so important to me. But on the other hand, I really want the viewer to ask the same questions to themselves, especially about the institution or these kind of institutions, because every um, city, every country has a museum like this. And what do we do? with these museums? Do we leave them the same? Do we want to change them? How do we bring them into the 21st century? Do we want to make them more representative? And if so, how? So I wanted to function as, you know, representing the girls, but also to open up a lot of questions. And I love how it puts questions for us here in in a selecting team of a festival, which is an institution also. Like, how are we showing and screening images of, of girls and women and queer people and etc. Like, so it, it's really nice to to have the meet with the film with your film. <laughs> Leonardo, did you have a question? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you show a particular interest in, in the eyes man, of the, the women in the, the pictures. Man. Sometimes I get the impression they, that they are seeing the girls too. It's, it's like a game. You know? and, and also seeing us, of course. Uh, and in, uh, my question is, how was the, this work of creating images from the images? Man? And this I spent so much time in the museum. They were very generous. They gave me a pass. And as long as the museum was open, I could just film endlessly. And, uh, and I grew to love all of the artworks, even the ones that I didn't like. And you know, to be so up close to them, and then again with a zoom lens to get even closer. And you know, they almost seemed like living entities and in a way they are changing they're decomposing they're getting dust and there's this scene in vertigo the hitchcock film where the james stewart character is following the heroine i don't remember her name and she goes to a museum and there's this painting of the character who she's imitating and in there there's this um you know, J uh, James Stewart is following her. He's looking at her. She's looking at the painting. The painting is looking back at James Stewart. And this, in a way, um, it's a scene that I always show to my students having to do with point of view of voyeurism and who knows what and what's carried through the look. And I have to say that I was thinking of Vertigo when I was filming also. I mean, most of the, artworks that I um, filmed were representational, a lot of narrative. And so they create these stories that are quite cinematic. Yeah, you should see Vertigo if you haven't seen it. Amazing movie. <laughs> yeah, but that was a surprise for me. I, I, I wasn't expecting this reference, you know, <laughs> but for me, it's really intriguing how how we can find in, in the ideas expressed by the girls on one hand, um, reverberations of feminism and queer movement, and on the other hand, a more conservative and sometimes moralistic uh, perspective. And it makes me think a lot about at least five decades of discussions about the gays and the male gays on films, on art. And I read somewhere that previously the film was called Girls Future, not Girls Museum. I don't know if it's right. But then I, I, I was interested in knowing what you were expecting to find in the girls' opinions before making the film. But also in what you are guess now about how young women and young queer people maybe will face in the future these questions on art, on life in general. Yeah, um, because when I was making it, I was just thinking because these museums, they're historical, right? They look back there, but uh, and 
nobody understands how influential they are in terms of the way we see the present and the way that we see the future. And I think that this is really clear in the film that a lot of the girls are subconsciously or unconsciously influenced, like who can be an artist, who is a good artist, how are these decisions being made? Uh, so that's why I thought Girls Future, but of course, then I think it's a better title, more straightforward Girls Museum, because it's about a lot more than the future, although you could say it's also a lot more about girls, about museums. But anyway, I hold to, I hold to the new title. Um, one of the things that really surprised me was the girls talking about power. And it kind of depressed me, I have to admit, because I wanted the girls to say, yes, it's, I want power. It's time for me to have more power, for girls to have more power. In the future, I want power. Or also, I want to be the curator and I want to be the director. And this is how I would change it. I don't want to give away too much. Uh, and that some of the girls didn't want that. Um, it, it was bittersweet for me. I understand that, you know, they some of them felt that power corrupts or it's unfair. But on the other hand, if you want to change things, you have to have this idea that like, yes, why not me? Uh, why not uh, me making the decisions? And this is also after so long where Merkel was chancellor. I mean, here you have a country that was really run by a woman for many, many years, and yet still not to have this idea of like, I'm next, you know, I'm next in power. And you think about the, the title, uh, uh, at the beginning you create an approach uh, around the museum, but uh, it's an interesting narrative choice to start with the girls already inside the museum. Um, it's, uh, it's something, uh, I believe it's um, something very different uh, if you uh, show the, the girls walking around and, and entering the space, you know, the, she, the girls uh, are right inside the space. You know. Or even to show the girls at home, in school, all of these things that I felt, put it this way, I don't think that I was representing the girls. I was representing the girls on a certain afternoon or a certain morning uh, with certain weather out um, that, that so that's why I didn't want to expand on their lives. I mean, if they said a few things about their lives, I, and it seemed important, I would include them. Uh, but also, often when you have experts, you don't have them. I mean, if, if it's about one person, yes, you would have the curator walking into the museum, possibly, or at least walking into the exhibition. But experts don't have time to walk around. They don't have time, you know, like you just start out with them because what they, they're saying is precious and bam. Although I did show them walking, some of them walking from room to room, looking at work before they spoke about it sometimes because I really love those um, quiet moments. And also so that we, the viewer could think, oh, are they going to talk about that painting? I hope so. What are they thinking about it? Um, so that's something that I wanted to keep in, although with the balance, of course, that, you know, I wanted to privilege what they had to say. Yeah. But like, I know it was first screened at Leipzig, in Doc Leipzig. And then I, I was trying to imagine how the people who work to the museum and even the girls, how, how was this relation seeing the film? <laughs> I was really, really nervous. Um, yeah, about the reaction, the mother's reaction, the father's reaction, you know, like whoever came. And I wish I would have been there because then I would have had much 
more of a feel, although I think I would have been even more nervous about it. Um, it was, yeah, sad not to be able to be there. Um, luckily, the reactions that I heard were all good. And happily, I go to Doc Leipzig this fall uh, to do a projection on the museum, but also I'll have a screening finally in person or maybe two during the festival where the girls could come and be there and there could be further discussion. I mean, of course, I filmed it in 2018. So the people in the uh, film are now quite, quite different. And so that's another thing I'm really curious to hear about how their views have changed and how their views of seeing themselves have changed. If they say, oh, I recognize myself completely, or, oh my God, I'm like a different person. And that, that's the great thing about that age that you change so much, like a, a few of the girls are at university, they're not living in Leipzig anymore. Um, so it'll be really exciting to see them, yeah. It can be a starting point for a new film, right? Like. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten this question, what would it be like if I had done the film in New York or in Lisbon or other places? Uh, I mean, it's, it's an open question that I ask myself too. Um, I would leave the invitation open for anybody to, <laughs> to do it if they'd like to. I mean, usually when I make a film like this, it's like, there it is. And if somebody wants to update it, it's like, please, yeah, have fun. And uh, you filmed Germany in the 90s. Uh, uh, you yes. have a, a long relationship with Germany and, and in another political moment in the 90s. And now, how do you see Germany in this film, uh, uh, Girls Museum? How this the, the film uh, shows the, the, the German uh, today? Uh it was really a wonderful thing to do the film in Leipzig because my film from 1994, Former East, Former West, which was shot in Berlin, was about former East and former West Germany. And so to do the film in Leipzig where the first demonstration started bringing down the wall and where you now have this mix of uh, people who were from former East Germany and then, you know, transplants uh, to East Germany from the West and also, you know, whole other demographics that never existed uh, when I was, um, you know, when the wall came down. It was really great. And it, you know, Leipzig is a very particular place in Germany, as is Berlin. Uh, you know, when I was in Leipzig, people were telling me how different Saxony is, you know, the rest of the region from Leipzig. Leipzig is a very wealthy city. Um, it's, it's doing quite well. The rest of Saxony is not. Um, so I, I can't really say how Germany is doing, but it was interesting in the film how many issues around Germany and the history of Germany came up either through the girls or through the paintings we saw. And that's another reason I was glad to do it in the museum where you have holdings from the past. A lot of the holdings were either destroyed or you know, through uh, Nazi uh, paring down or um, also they gained a lot of holdings through Jewish people who had to leave. And, and then the uh, East German art that was up. So it's very, very fascinating, very, very fascinating collection they have. But I can't really answer how Germany is doing. Yeah, it's too big of a question. With COVID, they're doing better than the United States, that I will say, yeah. For sure, better than Brazil too. <laughs> and well, I don't think we have much more time. So since we are talking about the countries and et cetera, I would like to ask you, if there is anything you could say to the Brazilian audience specifically, like something you would like to know to, to end the, our talk. Um, well, this is really quite simple, but I've never been to Brazil. I've always wanted to come to Brazil and it's 
uh, you know, it's such a vibrant culture. And also we have a lot in common, unfortunately, um, as we know, because uh, we just finished with Trump. So kind of to compare <laughs> experiences that hopefully uh, are moving on for both countries, it's yet to be determined. So, I mean, maybe that's what I would like to say. Please invite me sometime. <laughs> we'll be expecting you. Um, I don't know when, but in the future, please come to Brazil. <laughs> it will be you. a pleasure. Oh, Leo, would you like to say anything else or do you have well, another take, question? Well, I wanna thank you. Shelley, thank you for your kind words, your ideas. Yes. And what I would, I would say is, um, you know, thank you for this. Thank you for the screenings. And because there won't be a Q&A, please reach out to me uh, with feedback, good, bad, ugly, anything. And I don't know how we could do that. I'm at info at shellysilver.com. If anybody wants to send any feedback, that would be really wonderful. Nice. So, well, I want to thank you. It was a great, great pleasure to have this talk. I'd love to meet you. And I am very, very excited about screening the film at Olhar de Cinema and hope to see you soon in, in person. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hope to see you both soon. And thank you so much. And thank you for your questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.